Seems there's nothing for me to do this morning. I guess they don't need me at the police department. Not that I mind. Okay. Options. We got Remy, Bryce, Adine, and uh, Kevin. Ah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin. The, the furry dragon. That must be him. Howdy, howdy. Oh, good to see you again. This is where you live, huh? For the time being. It's pretty nice for a small town like this one. Are you not from around here then? No, I'm just here for the job until next semester starts. Basically, I'm trying to drum up interest with the college and see if there's anyone around who'd like to apply for it. So he's just some random student. That I've invited to my home. What is going on? How's that working out for you? Well, I haven't actually met that many candidates out here so far. Yeah, they're all hicks. For a town like this one, it's typical for the young people to go on an apprenticeship to prepare for their future job rather than go to college. But if there's anyone willing, we want to find them. Even out here? Yeah, there's always a need for more highly educated people in the cities as they expand. Cities? That's the first I hear of cities in this world. I thought this town was where it's at. Then you've really been missing out. This town isn't really all that special when it comes down to it. I've lived in the city for most of my life, of course. That's where the college is. I don't think they build one out here, though. I think as ambassador, they'd show me around a bit, but apparently that isn't the case. Your visit's a bit of a political issue right now. The bottom line is, it's also for your own protection. Alright, keep me out. up in the sticks. Everything surrounding the portal has been a well-kept secret. People know it exists, and we currently have human visitors. But the exact location is only known to those who live here. If it ever got out, I don't think this town could face the ensuing torrent of tourists trying to catch a glimpse of you. Travels are restricted as well. There are strict conditions for people who want to come out here. The only reason I was allowed is because it isn't the first time I'm doing this job. The people here already know me. Heck, I didn't even know this was the town in question until I arrived and heard everyone talking about you. Well, I'm glad they're taking this matter seriously. They certainly are. I'd like to know more about the cities you talked about though. Well, I can only speak about the one I live in, but what do you want to know? I only really have this town as a point of reference, so why don't you tell me about what's different? Okay, everything. <laughs> Out here, living in general seems to be a lot cheaper than it is in the city, and there's much more room for everything. There are green spaces, fields, parks and farms. You don't really see that in the city. People are more laid back, and there's a bigger sense of community, as everybody knows everyone, which can be good and bad. For example, rumours travel fast and survive well in areas like this one. In the city, you can just make new friends when that happens, but out here, a few well-placed stories could mean social death. In the city, it's also much more crowded, buildings pretty much line the streets, and there isn't much room for anything else. But with the clubbing scene and opportunities for socialising, there's no shortage of potential friends. They also made... Basically, it's... Yeah, it's the same as here. Cities, more people, and in the countryside, there's less people. Okay... Creative jobs of all kinds, for example, game designers, writers, artists, that kind of stuff. The same goes for teaching positions in those areas as well. For example, if I wanted to learn how to write a romance novel, I can't find a course for that easily. Out here, it would be a lot more difficult. Do you know what I mean? Gotcha. In a way, it feels like you're always busy when you live in the city. The streets are usually filled with people trying to get somewhere. Of course. This is also a side effect of the small apartments, as people tend to go out more and seek entertainment elsewhere. What do you prefer? In the end, I suppose I prefer the city. That's not to say I think one is better than the other, different strokes are different folks. You know, out here people will probably laugh at some of the things I do in my free time, but in the city you get enough like-minded people to even get conventions going about all kinds of things. Oh, we're on the convention scene now. I like all kinds of geek things, cartoons, comics, manga, anime, hentai, furry, barra, guru, all that stuff. I've even written a few fanfics before too since I can't really draw that all that well. Fair enough. Art cartoons usually for kids. Wow. That's like saying books are usually just for kids. Cartoons are just a medium, of course. Don't preach. Cartoons for adults, I see. Not like that. Well, I mean, there are cartoons like that, but that wasn't what I was talking about. If you got this far into the game, you know this. <laughs> you know this. Alright, in any case, what else falls under geeky interests for you? Let's see. 
I guess you could say I'm kind of a techie. I like following news about technology and hearing about de new developments in the industry. You must be pretty interested in the portal then. Alright, I didn't even consider that I could actually go there and check it out. If I knew where it was, that is. It's, it's seriously, you can see it out the window. It's not a problem. I could show you. Really? If you did that, you'd be like the coolest human I've ever met. I'm the only human you've ever met. I suppose you'd be that by default. See, there we go. Okay, let's just go. Yeah, I'll be right behind you. Here, here's the state secret. Let's let's go. Do you want to see? Yeah, let's let's have a look. This just doesn't seem wise. <laughs> there it is, in all its glory. That looks so much cooler than I thought it would. State your business. Yeah, Sebastian's on the case. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to show the portal to my friend here. <laughs> well, friend, you can look, but don't touch anything. No photos. Do I even look like I have a camera? The dude's butt naked. He ain't got no secret pockets on him. Well, you could be hiding something in your fur. Wow. Are you going to give me a pat down? I don't think so. <laughs> What's that, though? Flyers for our Midwest institution. I could give you one if you're interested in going back to school. No, thank you. I'm quite happy with my current job, which is protecting the portal from any unsavory individuals. What's up with you, Sebastian? <laughs> Just doing my job. It could be a spy. Really? Really, really? There's been a lot of interest in the portal from the cities. They've made us offers, but for now, we're not going to do anything until we see how your visit turns out. In the end, it's just a political power struggle. Small towns like us have to protect our interests. And in the process, reinforce the stereotype of country bumpkins being conspiracy nuts. Fair enough. You know I could arrest you, right? Respect is a two-way street. I'm just saying, officer. <laughs> Trust is good, but control is better. It's just a matter of perspective. Oh my god. Well, I think I've seen enough. Anyway, let's head back. Okay. You're not going to leak anything, are you? course not. <laughs> now that I think about it, I totally could. Really? Don't. I've got some connections at a potential audience. Now you're starting to sound like Sebastian had a point. <laughs> not really. I just know a few people from writing a column in our college magazine. It got popular enough that it was even featured in the local newspaper for a while. And what do you write about then? Nothing special. It was just a commentary about common events. I see. You're pretty involved in your local community then. Not more than anyone else, I think. What's it like to live on campus? Is this is this relevant? Is this interesting? College in general is a pretty unique period of life, I would say. Something I've noticed is, is that some people are not prepared for the independence they have while living on campus. You're given a chaotic schedule where you have nothing to do on some days, whereas on others you're kept busy with classes, homework and other things that you have to do. With study buddies, roommates and classmates, it's not really hard to make new friends. You also get to meet a lot of people who share similar interests from taking the same classes or being in the same clubs. And don't forget about the dorms, so all these people are always within reach, which can be good and bad. You can be tempted to hang out with friends when you should really be studying. For many people, it becomes the first taste of real freedom and independence. Some just handle it better than others, I suppose. That can be a pro basically, this is like how to be a student. We, we know these things if you're a certain age. It's, it's common sense. Okay. I enjoy what I'm doing. I don't mind the homework. And sometimes I read up on subjects in advance so I don't get left behind. I've even corrected the professor once or twice during the lecture. Don't do that. I think that wouldn't be a good idea with certain kinds of professors. Well, with ours, I was even allowed the privilege of giving a guest lecture for my own class once. Ain't you a little goody two-shoes? Yeah, that's the kind of thing I was talking about. Come on, learning should be fun. It certainly is for me. I suppose being able to have that kind of attitude makes it a lot easier. It certainly does. Let's see if that keeps up once you've got a few more semesters under your non-existent belt. Don't be so negative. And just for your information, I do have a belt. What? To hold up what? Your trousers? What? Besides, it's not as if I'm some kind of antisocial hermit who only focuses on his studies. I just know when to say no to my friends. Uh-huh. Yeah, we usually get together on weekends and do some cooking together. It's so wholesome. People can only sa stand so much frozen food before they get sick of it. And eating out in the city can add up pretty quickly if you're not careful. Uh-huh. We rotate the cook every week. But apparently, people are looking forward to when it's my turn. Wow, he totally rates himself, this guy. 
A homemade mac and cheese. Alright, so I bet they all miss it, but they'll get to taste it again once summer vacation is over in a month or so. And in the meantime, you're just handing out flyers. Yeah, it's good to help our college, and I can also save up a bit in the process. It's certainly easier than trying to juggle the job and homework at the same time later on, if things get tight. What are you studying again? It was psychology, come on. Yes. Uh-huh. Alright, go ahead and analyse me right now. Uh-huh. Doesn't really work like that. <laughs> I know, you just passed the test. Oh, I know what you're getting at. Maybe I'll steal that test from you though. Might be worth trying it out on a few people I know. Go for it. On a more serious note, tell me something about what you're learning. What, anything? I just want to get an idea on the subject and whether it's com comparable to our own understanding of psychology. Okay. I could tell you about an old and very simplified model of our psyche that we got taught in our introductory classes. Sounds good. What, we're really going to get like, a, a miniature psychology lesson now. Kevin, why did I bring you to my house? Okay, so this model divides our psychic apparatus into three distinct parts called the id, the ego, and the superego. The id represents our most basic desires and instinctual drives, that is, our physical needs and wants like hunger and thirst, as well as desires and impulses. What's the difference? An impulse is more like wanting to lash out in anger, for example. The id seeks out immediate gratification for these urges. It's in conflict with the superego, which represents our learned behaviour like cultural and moral rules and societal standards. The kind of stuff we learn from our role models like parents, teachers or guardians. The superego is the part that forms our conscience and controls our sense of right and wrong. We seek to hold these standards to perfection, which most of the time goes against what the id wants at any given moment. You sound like you had to rote learn a lot of this. If those internalised rules are broken, this misbehaviour is punished by the superego with feelings of guilt and shame. This way, we are compelled to behave in accordance with these rules even if the id tempts us to do otherwise. And in between these two conflicting parts of us, there's the ego, he's trying to mediate. It represents our rational mind and seeks to please the id's drive in a way that doesn't harm us or goes against the superego's goals. However, it also serves another master, the external world. The ego includes all our decision making and how we respond to external stimuli. Ultimately, it's the one calling the shots while trying to balance the needs of the id, the superego and the external world. And there you have it, the outdated, simplified model of our psyche. It still serves as a good introduction though. Thanks, I think I may have heard about something like this before. Why did you go with psychology? I'm just interested in how people work, I guess. It's also an incredibly diverse subject, and so are the potential jobs. Just being able to understand people is such a huge factor in many fields, and the skills you learn can come in handy in all areas of life really. Or, well, as opposed to like studying people, you could just develop some kind of empathy with people. That also works. When people hear about psychology, most usually think of psychologists or psychotherapists. But they can also be counsellors for communities and organisations, researchers or teachers. You also often see them teaming up with other professionals to influence every part of society. Just think about the hospitals, courtrooms, prisons, even schools and universities. They can also become coaches for high performance jobs where they work with CEOs, athletes and performers of all kinds. Every institution and every business that works with people can profit from the presence of someone who has studied psychology. That's why you also find this kind of knowledge to be incredibly helpful, even when you're a manager in sales because those jobs require empathy and an understanding of your clients needs. Understanding people is just something that can come in handy pretty much wherever you go and that's what psychology is all about. In your opinion, no problem. Even in video games, psychology is a factor. Horror games are an obvious example, but also with tutorials or UI design and how people interact with your game. Uh, psychology and player expectations are always going to be a factor. I get, I get it, I get it! Out here, I think a lot could be done to improve the image of the field, you know. What do you mean? There's a bit of a stigma to admitting that you need help, especially when you're doing fine physically. For them, it's a sign of weakness, so in order to preserve their image, they hide everything away. But locking away those feelings doesn't solve the problem. If anything, it makes it worse. Is that something you'd like to work with? Me? Honestly, I don't know if I could tackle a big issue like that. It's good for me that psychology is such a diverse field, but I'm not quite sure where I'm going with it yet, or what particular job I'd like to have after I'm done with my studies. Okay you got plenty of time. Yet, before I came here for my summer job, I was interning at a psychotherapist's office for a month. 
I also got to hear about some very interesting and also tragic cases. Isn't there kind of like, if you're a psychologist, you kind of have to keep that stuff secret? Like an oath or something? Oh well. I thought I wanted to help with issues like that, but sometimes it's pretty hard to not be affected too much by those stories. So I'm not sure if that's the right job for me. I think a lot of psychologists also have their own psychologists to help them handle that. But you like working with people, right? I don't know. Maybe interning there was a little too close to the sun for me. If you didn't, why would you be the one to hand out the flyers? Just like you mentioned earlier, psychology comes in handy with sales and similar jobs where you have to interact with people. Handing out flyers is pretty similar to that, don't you think? I guess so. You seem to be doing well enough for that. You help bring your college and people together, and in this way, you're helping both. And it's been a lot of fun too. After all, I got to meet you and even got a glimpse of the portal. Who knows? Maybe one of those people you handed a flyer will one day turn out to be a famous person or something. Now, I think that's a little bit too idealistic, but I'll get your point. It doesn't always have to be about the big problems. Little problems need solving too. Like what you're eating on the weekend. Yeah. What about you? What do you mean? I don't want to pry, but we've been talking all this time, and you know a lot more about me than I do about you. Maybe you can't say anything about where you grew up or what you're studying because it's top secret or whatever, but I'd be lying if I said I weren't curious. Well, I don't like talking about myself all that much, and I think there are some things that are better left unsaid. I see. If you're curious, I guess it's only fair I share a few things as well. You know, it's been fun talking about college. I already got my degrees a while ago. It was interesting to go job hunting for jobs with my usual combination of degrees, but I thought it would open a few doors. But before I got anywhere, our world underwent a few changes that made a lot of jobs obsolete. It's been a rough time since. Turns out those degrees came in handy after all because they, in the end, they enabled me to come here. If I consider all the good and bad that's happened since my arrival, it's been a vacation compared to home, and it looks like the vacation might come to an end soon, as in the world's gonna get destroyed. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen after that. I can only help my visit here would have started something that would mean change for our world. But I'm not sure if that's going to happen. I shouldn't be such a downer though. Sorry for bringing it up. And maybe that explains why I don't like talking about it. What's your professional opinion on this? Well, in my professional opinion as a flyer distributor, I'd recommend a generous application of hugs. But that's just me. You look like you could need them. Is this guy coming onto it? Oh, uh, oh. Uh, fine. Hug. He took a step forward, and I soon found myself being enveloped in the furry dragon's embrace. With him pulling me close, it felt like a giant furry blanket was all around me as the hairs tickled my exposed skin. Wow, furry hug! <laughs> <laughs> After a few seconds, we parted, and he took a step back again. I hope things can be better for you in the future. I don't think I can do anything to help with that, though. I don't know, you prefer the little problems. Okay, it's dark. It's getting dark. I should probably head out and look for a cave or else I'll have to sleep in the streets. What are you talking about? Well, it seems like all the hostels are already full. Despite the vetting process for visitors, enough people have got in to take all the available short-term lodging spots in this town. Is this guy fishing? Is he? Does he want to stay? Oh, really? Yep, despite only a few people knowing your location or that of the portal, journalists and tourists are flocking to the towns hoping to catch a glimpse or at least find a clue of your whereabouts. That only leaves me with the option of finding or renting a cave or sleeping in the streets. Not that I'd mind sleeping in a cave, but for someone like me it's usually something of an adventurous weekend rather than a way of life, and rocks don't exactly make for the best bedding. Well, well now! This guy's clearly fishing, and I've already gone for the hug, so fuck it. <laughs> you better get going. No, um, fuck it. Let's just see how far this thing's going to go. Stay. Really? Yeah, plenty of room here, and it's kind of my fault that you couldn't find another place anyway. I guess that means you don't share the officer's suspicions about me being a spy then. Not really. I don't give a shit. You know, I could totally take this room apart while you're sleeping. There's, there's nothing here. I don't care. You're not helping your case there. Besides, you won't find anything special here. These books aren't mine. The, nothing's mine. I haven't got any possessions. Hey, I'll keep an eye on that copy of Draconic Desire if you've got on the shelf there. I might be tempted to snatch it when you're not looking. Like I'd mind. If you need something for bedtime reading, feel free to help yourself. Oh, I will. <laughs> okay, I met Kevin. Um, yeah, I got an achievement for that. Fair enough. 